So our next session is a Q&A session uh, about DBS Bank's journey from Oracle to MariaDB. And with me here today, I have Pandi Krishnan Gurusami. Pandi, welcome. Hi, Kai. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to talk to you. And we're happy to have you. So, so you are an enterprise architect at MariaDB PLC. So can you say a couple of words about yourself and then we'll go into uh, separately into what DBS Bank is, but yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, myself, uh, I'm Pandit Krishnan and uh, I have been working with this open source uh, database technology for past 15 years. And uh, I am uh, I am with the uh, MariaDB PLC for last 18 months. And, uh, and also I will work as a enterprise architect for uh, DBS Bank Singapore. I'm located in Singapore. So. Cool. So, so, so that makes you an expert on DBS Bank in several capacities. So you're, you're a supplier through MariaDB PLC for DBS Bank, but you're also exposed to DBS Bank as a consumer, as a user of DBS Bank. And I'm afraid that uh, many of our viewers do not know DBS Bank much. So DBS stands for Development Bank of Singapore. And I've understood that it's the largest bank in Southeast Asia. Is that correct? Yeah, you are absolutely right. DBS Bank is one of the largest uh, bank in the APEC region. And then especially in Singapore, it is the number one bank. So obviously you may know lots of wealthy individuals deposit their money in Singapore, their first choice is DBS. Mm -hmm. And uh, so can you say a couple of words about the profile of DBS? They said, yep, it's the biggest bank in, in um, Southeast Asia and, and wealthy people deposit their, their money there. But I also have the impression that like everybody is depositing their money there if you, if you live in, in, in Singapore. So it's uh, it, it is also a bank for the masses, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because it, as DBS Bank is a local bank in Singapore, everyone will be ha having an account in Singapore, DBS Bank. So if you take myself, my when I when I reached uh, my Singapore, my first account was opened with DBS. So I'm the DBS account holder for last nine years myself. And um, I've read up on, on DBS Bank and been uh, interviewing people from, from DBS Bank and uh, looked at presentations about uh, DBS. So I have the impression that DBS Bank uh, sees it more as a, an IT company in banking rather than a bank that uh, does a lot of IT. Is, is that the correct impression? Yeah, you are absolutely correct. DBS is one of the most uh, digital, digitalized and innovative bank in this region. And uh, whatever cutting edge technologies, they they immediately adopt it and starting using it. So you name any technology, you will have an uh, expert in DBS and there will be a project in DBS which is exploring the new technology. For example, generative AI, and now they are already having a project which is which they are doing some R and D for how to improve the banking experience with the customer. And the DBS is the, one of the first banks in Singapore to launch the mobile uh, mobile application. Mm -hmm. So uh, generative AI, we need to talk more about that because generative AI is a big theme for MariaDB. Uh, right now, and we have presentations here in Brussels related to it. But uh, let's go to the uh, classical situation that, that uh, you described. You said mobile banking. That's more, more classic. So um, yes, you said you haven't been for ages with uh, 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 the project, but I think you know something about the roots. Like, what was the situation? at DBS Bank before the journey to MariaDB started? 
Yeah, actually, the MariaDB journey with DBS started around 2016. Before that, uh, DBS Bank is more likely, like, uh, like all other financial institutions, they were using the legacy database technologies. And uh, they are most of the work related to technology, especially maintaining databases, everything, 80, more than 80% was fully outsourced. So that is the stage before the journey. So the stage before the journey was a number of databases, mostly Oracle, a bit of DBS, uh, and MySQL, I suppose, as well. So they had both commercial and open source databases, right? No, previously, we, uh, previously they are they are mostly with the legacy uh, legacy databases, which are vendor locked in, like Oracle, DB2, SQL Server. So they were mostly using this these databases in their environment. So what was then the impulse to to change this to start porting towards MariaDB? Yeah, the the, the major impact is like the vendor lock in vendor lock in and uh, and uh, the cost cutting measures reduce the IT spending uh, for paying unnecessary uh, licensing fee for the there's legacy databases like Oracle and DB2 things. So uh, you were mentioning vendor lock-in. I suppose it cannot have been a simple operation. Uh, uh, what I've heard about the, the process for, for migrating is that they had a mindset of uh, which was quite different from how you would usually do a migration. So. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the right, the, the, the sort of standard way of doing migrations is that you take an application, you look at in which way it's locked into something like Oracle, and then you, you change it so that the aspects that lock you into Oracle are no longer there, and you can instead start using MariaDB, which has a different set of functionality. So that would be the traditional way. Uh, the way that I have heard that it was approached by uh, DBS Bank was that instead of changing the applications, you change the server. So uh, they tried to keep uh, the applications running under Oracle as unchanged as possible, and instead make a change MariaDB to be as similar uh, to Oracle as possible with an Oracle mode. Is that the, the the way that they approach this? Yeah, uh, obviously it is very thanks to the Oracle mode, so it made the migration process very easy compared to the other techno other open source technologies. If you need to uh, migrate from Oracle to any other any other uh, databases other than MariaDB, you need to you need to rewrite your code and. Uh, adapt it to that technology but obviously mariadb has the oracle mode which is very far which is very helpful and far which makes faster in achieving their migration journey so let's put some numbers to this the first number would be how many applications overall were there running databases that were considered for uh, migration so there were like more than 300 plus applications were running during that time, 2016. Okay, so hundreds of applications, over 300, you say. Um, do you have a picture of how many of those are, I, th I suppose they come in, in like internal applications that are specific to DBS and let's call them external applications that others are using, but they will still use Oracle or other databases. So. Out of those, how many are now uh, migrated to, to MariaDB, the internal and external ones? So in internal ones, like most of them were already migrated and running in MariaDB. And uh, in the external ones, majority of them are also migrated to MariaDB. So oh, cool. So yeah, so so if uh, so the internal yeah. ones. Most of them are there, and even out of the external ones where you 
have lesser influence on it. A majority is running on, on Maria DB. So yeah. um, let me then try to understand how this migration process happens. So it's a, it's a technical one, a technical process, and it's also a political uh, process. So I've been told that they picked, for the first application, they picked something technically very easy, just to show that this can be done. Look, what was on Oracle is now on MariaDB. But then the second one that they picked was a very complex one, or the most complex one, I've been told, um, and complex is perhaps a different thing than critical, but still, uh, the most complex one, so that they would get rid of this excuse of uh, uh, people saying, well, I saw you ported this trivial application, but, but mine is much more complicated. I'm sorry, we cannot port mine. Uh, so is that the way that they uh, sort of persuaded internally the politics by taking the most difficult uh, to port one and successfully doing it, and then uh, sort of being able to say, so shut up, this is working, uh, when people were resisting it. Yeah, you were absolutely right. In the initial, uh, when they started up with the migration, they migrated the very non-critical one, and to, to get them confident and to get them tested very well, in that case, they chose a very non-critical one, and then in the second step, they moved with the complex one to um, take uh, and get get more confidence about uh, this product will be stable even if we move from the legacy database Oracle. And it has all the capabilities of Oracle Oracle in, in the MariaDB Oracle mode. To make sure, uh, if I remember correctly, I, I know one of the complex B2B application was uh, running since 10.2 version on MariaDB in the olden days. It was recently migrated to 10. upgraded to 10.6 recently. At the time I came to know that was in 10 that was in 10.2 like five five six years before. Mm -hmm. Cool. So uh yeah, that must have been an exciting and also scary moment to 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 to, to go uh, with production data. So do you have any uh, numbers for us uh, about the size of these applications, the number of transactions? I mean, you say it's it's uh, one of the biggest banks in the world or biggest bank in Southeast Asia. So the, the volumes must be fairly impressive. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, I, I, I remember uh, there is a wallet application which is widely used by all the Singaporeans. We call it a Spela. So it serves millions of transactions a day. Usually on Fridays where there is some offer going on in that application. So during the lunchtime, it will serve millions of uh, transactions in, in the minutes. As well as the more uh, most of the B2B and trading applications were running in MariaDB. So you just imagine the the TPS or throughput things in, in that, as well as nowadays, uh, uh, like the in, in the APAC region, every country is close to each other, right? So within 30 minutes, you can travel to Malaysia. So in that, uh, in that wallet application, you can still pay wherever you are in. If you are in Thailand also, you can pay using the D DBS wallet application. So it's running 24 by 7. And well, twenty-four by seven. I know about the the number of nines in that. So so high availability must be a, a a tricky thing. So do you have anything to say about how to maintain uh, the, the availability of these MariaDB applications? Yeah, yeah over the the over this of MariaDB application, the main part which they are very uh, maybe I can I can go back and. Tell. Oh. So the on top of Oracle mode, the other interesting part which DBS liked and moved to MariaDB is the one of the intelligent uh, proxy which we are having is a max scale, which has the capability of doing the switchover failover seamlessly and uh, 
even that helps uh, helps them to do uh, minor upgrades and even the ma major upgrades without any downtime so they obviously use uh, max scales so they have thousands of max scales running in their farm okay so so it's not just maria db server it, it's it's this proxy uh, max scale to, to to keep the the uh, the uptime up. So um, it's not when you port an application. It's not just about the syntax. Um, it's also about performance. So what about uh, what do you have to say about the performance of the um, of MariaDB server uh, compared to what it was prior to the migration? Yeah, the performance wise, MariaDB is uh, MariaDB is doing uh, ex uh, sorry. In the performance wise, MariaDB is doing far far great and uh, equally comparable with all the legacy legacy databases. So as I said uh, in the previous example, the the payment application and all other trading all other applications are still running on MariaDB. So the performance wise, it is it is it is very good and uh, it is uh, it is one of the even if you take in the DBS, most of the applications which are newly deployed, their first choice is MariaDB. Uh, so you mentioned something about ten dot two. A very old version. I think that was the first one with a sufficient level of Oracle node compatibility to to be of any help to 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 DBS Bank. So how do you test stuff now? Perhaps it has developed over time from the first migrations to to now. So can you say some share something about the the process of having new functionality in MariaDB and taking it into use and the duration of such a test process? Yeah, so uh, in the current in the current testing process, usually with the DBS, uh, as a bank, they will they need to test it for a, uh, quite a long cycle. So uh, usually they they started testing with their QA environment, and uh, they they do an extensive testing. Um, so after doing the testing, when it moves to production, it will take uh, minimum two months to maximum. Four months because uh, D in the DBS, due to the regulatory requirements, they always tend to run the applications on the latest version of MariaDB servers. So they always upgrade very frequently. So they are the one who require uh, request us lots of functionality. And whenever we, re we release some functionality, they are the one who is using our functionality than other customers. In the in the, in the other region, for example, uh, I can I still remember the example about the system versioning table. When we when it was introduced in 10.3, it was used for a, one of, one of the application in 10.3 itself. They built the whole system on the system versioning table on 10.3 itself. So they are they are they are a very fast adapter and uh, they they. They also need to use their la latest version of MariaDB due to their regulatory requirements. Mm -hmm. So uh, you said that the testing takes from two to four months. I'm sure testing is not just a cosmetic thing that you do only because of regulatory requirements. I'm sure there must be bugs as well. So can you say something about the type of problems? Is it performance regressions? Is it what, what kind of issues have? Uh, uh, DBS Bank run into during this testing? Yeah, during this testing, they obviously, uh, to be very fair, uh, they, they try to raise any bugs to us. They are the, as I mentioned, they are the one who is going to use uh, the latest version as soon as possible. So they, are, they, they immediately identified some bugs and report to us. So um, our development team will immediately fix them and uh, try to release it in the next version. Or in some cases, if the bug is really serious, we try to give it, fix it, and give it them as a 
custom build. Okay, so, so it's there are two types of fixes. One is the normal one, which goes into the next uh, generally available release, and the other one would be if it's very critical, then a custom custom build. Yeah. Uh, So anything to say about the configuration, other than you already mentioned that there is, uh, there are uh, max scale uh, instances involved and lots of them. Um, any other type of configuration things, replication uh, or such that, that, that we should hear about? Yeah, sure. Um, most of the setups in DBS will have uh, one minimum on replica to maximum four or five replicas based on the application requirement. And also they they use the delayed replica. If something goes wrong, someone has done someone someone has deleted or dropped something in the master. If they want to roll back to that state very faster to to mitigate the risk, they they always have a delayed replica in their critical systems. So in some critical systems, they even have two delayed replicas, one with the six hours delay, other one with the 24 hours delay. Okay, Pandi, so, so what then about the, the cost effects? You said that the goals from DBS Bank's side was reducing vendor lock-in and, and reducing costs. So that, that were the goals, but were they achieved and to what degree? Yeah, they have achieved. They have. Uh, if you if if you go if you go and see their annual reports from twenty sixteen onwards, they have reduced their IT IT spending significantly compared to their competitor in Singapore, and their their IT spending has not been grown uh, like their peers, like fifty or sixty percentage per year after twenty seventeen onwards. So obviously they reduced their cost cost base. They have they reduced the lots on IT spending as well as the, they they moved out of vendor lock in. Um, yeah. So if their goal or if they describe themselves as an IT company that does banking and still don't uh, increase their IT spending, it seems like like a success then. Yeah, and also the other thing is, like I mentioned previously, they outsource all the work. Now they have an in-house DBA team, so everything is in-house. So the outsourcing for infrastructure, especially the DBA-related stuff, are ninety percent reduced. And uh, now you're not DBS Bank yourself. You you. You represent MariaDB PLC, but still trying to distance yourself, if possible, from uh, from from MariaDB PLC directly. What's your uh, assessment? Is this a special case? Is DBS Bank a special case, uh, and is banking a special case, or or is this a generic uh, model for how to migrate in a very complex scenario? No, I, I would say DBS is not a special case. We, uh, I would say DBS is a great example how a company can move out of a legacy databases like Oracle or DB2 to MariaDB and how smooth the journey would be. So they have achieved it within this five, six years period. So it is a great, achieve, great achievement and uh, uh, the other, uh, not only the financial sectors, any other any other sectors in the world can always adapt uh, MariaDB. It is a it is a very easy adaptable if you want to move out of any other any other legacy databases. So uh, let me try to understand this this migration of for somebody else. So you're you're saying that it took many many years. Uh, to migrate, is it is it always is it continuing to be a, a process of several years? I would imagine that the the stuff which were implemented in this uh, mode Oracle mode would make it shorter for for upcoming uh, 
uh, new migration cases. Yeah, yeah, that is obviously true. With the Oracle node, your migration would be smoother. Uh, the the years which I mentioned is within this within this five six years, DBS has moved uh, totally like ninety percent of their databases to MariaDB. That is one of the great example which I try to portrait. Very good. So. Any any concluding words? Any any sort of generic lessons from this pande? Yeah, for me, it's mostly like a very good uh, learning experience about uh, studying the uh, DBS, how they migrated, and all. As I mentioned, it is open to any company, not only the financial sector, even if you are in e-commerce or. Any other uh, in a fintech, even the current one, like someone with the generative AI or anyone, any company can easily adopt MariaDB. Pandi Krishnan, thanks a lot for this. Yeah, thank you, Kai. Thank you for your time and uh, thank you for having me here.